Hey, happy Friday options traders. Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's interesting in the markets now with all of the talk about interest rates rising. I'm getting a lot more questions about bonds and interest rates, things that most of the time traders aren't real worried about. But it's funny how market conditions can suddenly cause a change for different types of knowledge. And so one thing that you're going to hear about are what are called implied interest rates. So what is an implied interest rate? Well, before we get started, as always, please click like. It is definitely making a difference for promoting the channel and is definitely very much appreciated. So an implied interest rate, what is it? Well, what we're doing with an implied interest rate is we are looking at future interest rates that are implied by the current spot rates. The spot rates are the rates you can get right now or on the spot. But an implied rate is saying, well, given these spot rates, what can we mathematically say is happening at different points in time in the future? So in some ways, it's like an implied volatility. For those of you who know about implied volatility with options, it's not a volatility that we observe. It's one that we are mathematically inferring based on things that we can observe. So in a similar way, the implied rate isn't an actual market rate that you can go onto a website and say, oh, I can get this implied rate. It's not. Again, it's just one that we can infer based on current rates. So it can get a little confusing. You'll probably never really need to do this. I just want you to understand what it means when you see the terms implied interest rates. And then you can at least have a better feel for how they're getting these numbers. So to make it easy, let's say that these are the current rates. Now, when they are doing this in the markets, they're usually looking at spot rates in the futures contracts for T-bills. But just to keep it simple, let's say that these are the rates that are currently offered by your bank, maybe for a CD. So the bank has a sign on the door right here that says for a one year investment, you can get 3%. If you want to lock up your money for two years, you can get 4%. Now keep in mind, interest rates are always an annualized number. This doesn't mean 4% total, it means 4% per year. You can also choose to lock up your money for three years and get 5% per year, or four years and get 6%. So one question we might want to ask is, well, I could just invest for one year, and then when that CD comes due, I could renew it. And what number would I need so that it equals 4% for two years? And if I knew that, that would be called the implied rate. Specifically, it would be the one-year rate in one year. So this is where it gets confusing, but you can think of it as, again, if these are signs on your bank, if we could go forward in time, jump into a time machine, and say, what will the one-year rate right here be in one year? That's what we're trying to find out. What's that going to be in one year? Well, we can infer that mathematically by looking at these current spot rates. And here's the way that we're going to do it. We're going to look at one investment where we take the two-year rate, and I'm going to get 4% per year. So mathematically, we take 1.04, that's one plus the interest rate, I multiply it by 1.04 for the second year. Mathematically, that's the same thing as 1.04 squared. And it's going to come up to 1.082, or just a touch over 8%. But what I can do is I can take this number and divide it by the one-year rate. So let's take this 1.082 divided by 1.03 comes to just a touch over 1.05. And what that is telling you is that's saying that in one year, the market is expecting this rate to be 5%. Well, how do we know that? Well, again, you could just take the one-year rate at 1.03, and when that matures, you could renew it at the implied rate of 1.05, and look at that. It's going to give you 1.082 exactly the same as getting the 4% rate for two years. So do you see what's happening? We're just finding what's called an indifference point. I would be indifferent between taking 4% for two years or taking 3% for one year and then 5% for the second year, they both are going to give me, let's just call it a touch over 8%. So why is this the implied rate? Well, if I felt that interest rates were going to be a lot higher than 5%, I'm going to take the 3% rate today for a year and then I will renew it in a year when they are at the higher rates, at least based on my expectations. But if I felt that rates were going to fall below this, 
then I would prefer to take the two-year rate. And so between all of that supply and demand, these are the rates that are appearing in the market. And because of that, we can infer that this is what everybody is thinking the one-year rate will be in one year. All right, well, we don't need to just look at the one-year rate in one year. We can do all kinds of combinations. What will the one-year rate be in two years? So in other words, we go into a time machine, we look at our banker's window right here. What is this rate going to be, the one-year rate, not in a year from now, but in two years? What is the one-year rate in two years? Well, we figure it out in a very similar way. One thing I could do is to take the three-year deal, 5% per year. So if you take 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05, that's the same thing as 1.05 to the third power, which comes up to 1.158, almost 16%. So that's one choice. But I could also take the two-year, take 4% per year, and then renew it for one year at the end of this two-year term. And so to find that rate, I would take the 1.158 divided by 1.04 squared. So again, I could take the two-year rate today, take 4% in the first year, 4% in the second year, and then I would renew at this implied rate, and it should give me the same answer as the 5% rate for three years. So what would that be? Well, we take 1.158 divided by 1.04 squared, that's this rate for two years, that comes up to be 1.071, just a touch over 7%. So this is telling you that the one-year rate in two years, the implied rate, is about 7%. How do we check the math? Well, if I take the 4% rate for two years, and then I renewed it at 1.07, I would end up with 1.158 at the end of the third year, exactly the same as if I just took the three-year deal. Now, once you understand this math, we can work it for any combinations. What if we have falling rates? If you see these four rates in the market, what is the one-year rate in one year? Well, we do the same thing. I could take the two-year rate. I could go into my bank and say, I want this two-year CD for 5% per year. I would end up with 1.1025, or just a touch over 10% after two years. But I could also take that rate and divide it by 1.06 and that gives me 1.04. And what that's telling me is that the implied rate in one year, the one year rate in one year is 4%. So again, here's the logic behind it. If I take the 6% rate at my bank, I let it mature, I take that money and I renew at the expected 4% rate, I end up with 1.1025, exactly the same as if I had taken the two year rate. So even though 4% isn't shown here as a one-year future rate, we are just simply inferring that from the current list of rates. All right, so remember, it can get confusing. All of these rates that we're seeing here are things you can get today. But this rate right here that we just figured out in red is saying, what will the one-year rate be, that's this rate, in one year? Right now it's 6%, but in one year we expect it to be 4%. And the way that I can figure it out is to go through these calculations. And we would say that the one-year rate in one year is implied at 4%. So yes, I know it can get confusing, especially if you've never seen various types of bond math. And I'm going to try to throw some up as new information comes out about bonds and things in the markets. But I just, for right now, even if you don't understand the math, if you can at least understand what the implied future rates are, it will certainly help you to make sense of future headlines. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the YouTube channel, Options A to Z, Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.